This video is part two of my portable suitcase solar panel series. In part one, I covered the Renogy 100 watt suitcase kit, and if you've not watched it yet, click on the link above. In this part, we will discuss how to connect the solar panel to the RV. Many RVs these days come from the factory with an installed solar panel outlet. And here are three of the examples of what you may find. To the right is a Furion outlet. To the left is a Zamp outlet with an SAE style connector. And in the center is a generic type with also a SAE connector. Now one thing interesting between the Zamp and the generic, the wires are reversed. So in other words, what you would consider the male connector here is on the negative side and the male connector here would be on the positive side. So there are some inconsistencies in the various solar outlets and we're going to cut to the chase on all that. We're going to show you how to figure out how to connect everything together regardless of what inlet you have and what solar panel you have. And as well, some RVs do not have any type of connector and we'll show you some options on that. Now between the three inlets you see here, the Furion is limited to 10 amps. You probably are going to exceed that if you use a 200 watt suitcase system. Although for a 100 watt system, it's going to work fine. And in video five, I will show you some options where you can actually use that Furion inlet for a 200 watt panel. And my RV has a Furion solar charge port right here that came from the factory. The battery is right behind it, so it's just a short hop from here to the battery. So I'm all set. Of course, the simplest option is just to take these battery cables, connect them to the battery, and you're done. But my guess is that it's not going to be sufficient. So we'll look at how to connect this thing right to the inlet. The only thing that you're going to need to connect your solar panel to the RV is an adapter cable. And the adapter cable must have the ends to fit both the RV's inlet connector and also the connector on the charge controller. And as we stated, there are several different inlets available. Unfortunately, you may need one of about five or six different adapters. And I happen to have a few adapters with me. The first one is a Furion connector to MC4 connector. And it happens to fit this Furion port like that. And next we have an SAE connector with MC4 again on that end. This will fit into a ZAMP connector. And by the way, the ZAMP connectors are called SAE. And it fits in like this. And if you happen to have the other style inlet, that is the one that the positive and negative reverse, a lot of times these will come with a polarity changer. Now the polarity is the other way and we can plug it in just like that. Now if you have to use this polarity changer, I would put a piece of heat shrink on there and secure it so that it doesn't come off. And we also have a MC4 to 8mm power cord. And this is good for if you have, say, a Jackery power station. You could charge it with a solar panel. And finally, we have MC4 to an accessory outlet. And I recommend going to my website where I show the different adapters that are available. For example, MC4 to Furion, SAE, SAE to Furion. So for most applications, you should be able to find the correct adapter you need from my website. One thing you have to be aware of, and this is true for my 100 watt energy panel, I don't have a sufficient amount of cable to hook the adapter and plug it into the RV. So I have this 10 foot MC4 extension. And this is a 10 gauge extension. Do not go more than just a few feet with your extension. Yes, I've seen a YouTube video where a guy put a 50 foot extension cord on his solar panel. But you're going to have a low performance system if you do that because of series voltage drop. I will cover that much more in length in the next video. But for now, I would recommend going no more than 15 feet with 10 AWG wire, especially if you have a 200 watt panel. And for most of us, 10 feet is going to be enough. Now in the last video, I'll show you some options where you can extend it much farther. To connect my Renogy panel to my RV, all I need is this 10 foot MC4 extension cable and this Furion to MC4 adapter, and I'm ready to install it. Before you connect the solar panel to the RV, I highly recommend doing some voltage checks just to make sure everything is correct. And you don't need a real fancy meter, but I'm using this Fluke 115. 
it's about $100, I think, so it's not that expensive for a good quality instrument. But, you know, you can do the same thing with a $20 meter. And nothing. No voltage. And when I opened the compartment to expose the battery, I looked behind the solar connector and I find that it's not connected to anything. This is quite common actually for a manufacturer to not connect a solar panel up to the battery. But since we're not connected, we can do another test to make sure we know which side is which as far as plus and minus. And I'm not only going to test the solar port, but I'm going to also do a system check and test the entire system. So we're going to plug our adapter in. We're going to go from the positive side to what I think is positive on the wires. And sure enough, the wire that has a red stripe is marked positive. And I'm able to see behind and see where it's connected. And sure enough, the red stripe wire goes to the positive wire. And I always like to put a piece of red and black tape on wires that might be a little bit confusing as to their purpose. That way you always know that one's positive and one's negative. Instead of connecting directly to the battery, I have ground on this bus here and then I have positive underneath here. So I'm going to connect the solar panel actually to these two wires, which in turn connect to the battery. And of course, you should always disconnect a battery before doing anything like this. I also connected the positive to the breaker that actually goes down into the battery. And now we're finished with the connection, so let's check our meter. We have our meter connected. This time we're in the voltage scale and we're 12.59 volts, 12.6, that's a full battery. Now for those of you that are not that adept to using a meter, if we were to connect leads backwards, that is positive on negative and negative on positive, the meter is going to show a minus sign indicating negative voltage. Let's hook our solar panel up and see if we can get it to work. And we have the extension cord hooked to the inlet. And we do have the extension cord hooked to the solar panel. And the charge voltage right now is 14.1 volts. And we're doing 4.6 amps. And for my next trick, remember I was going to show you how to build an adapter so you can connect your solar panel to the trailer's 7 pin wire without even connecting to the battery? What we have here is just a standard vehicle and trailer connector. And I added a gland to the end, just super glued it on. These are the wires we're going to use. They're MC4 pigtails. And there's one thing you need to know about the MC4 connectors. The male end is always positive from the panel. This does say positive on this connector. This says negative on the connector, and this is negative to the solar panel. When you connect these together, you got positive and negative, and so it can be confusing. Because this would be from the solar connector, and this would be to the battery. And when you disconnect it, you don't intrinsically know this would be positive from the battery perspective. So what I like to do is always put some red tape around the positive side, even though this looks like it could be negative. I take our two pigtails, put them through this gland, and then run them through the housing. And then according to the drawing that came with the connector, we can tell which wire is which. And now I have the connections made. Pin 4 is the positive to the battery, and pin 1 is the ground. This is marked 12 volts and ground. So we simply slide the cover of the connector on, and then tighten. Now we have a connector plug for the solar system. So I'll show you how that's used. We simply take our 7-pin trailer connector, plug it into our adapter, and then we hook this up to the charge controller on the solar panel. And that's going to charge the RV battery through the 7-pin trailer connector. So how about that? So that does it for part two of our solar series. Next up is part three where I discuss different mounting locations for the charge controller and different wiring configurations.